Welcome to the Skylake build. In this three part series we'll show you everything you need to create the most ultimate gaming PC as well as show you how it's done. If you've ever wanted to get into PC gaming or whether you want to ramp it up with some 4K G-Sync gaming, this is the place to start. In this video, part two, we'll be showing you exactly how this thing was put together and built. It will show you the ins and the outs and if you've never built a PC before it will show you exactly how it's done. If you do want to follow it along at home make sure you check out part one of this video which is in the little eye at the top right hand corner. Otherwise all you're going to need is a Phillips head screwdriver so this is the cross headed one. You're going to need to make sure you read your instruction manual so mainly your motherboard and your case and any water cooler if you have one. And make sure you have somewhere to put all those screws when you take them apart as well as this makes it a lot easier. So onto the actual building of the PC. The first thing to do is actually remove all the side panels and this is just done by unscrewing them at the back and then simply removing them. Do this for the front and the rear. If you plan on replacing the case fans like we are here then you'll probably need to take the front of the case off although this will depend entirely on the case. Here I just simply needed to unclip it. To replace your case fans you're going to need to know what size they are. Here we've got 140 and 120 millimeter mounts so either a 140 or 120 millimeter fan will fit. It's worth doing your fans one at a time so you know which was which and because you want to know which way round they go because you want to use this as an exhaust I've matched it up as the old one was and this way you know your fan blades are facing the right way. Now it's just a case of screwing your fans back into place. It's worth remembering that if you're using a airflow AF fan then this is going to be optimized where airflow is unrestricted or if you're using fans on the front like we are here where it's blocked by the front panel of the case I'm using static pressure fans as these will work quieter and more efficiently. Now you're going to need to get your screws and these are provided within your case and they are located in the hard drive bay. It may vary in your case however. Uh, these provide all the screws you need and many that you don't. So you're going to find that some of them fit, some of them don't. You'll be able to find out what they all do in your instruction manual that you should have already read. I'm going to install the power supply now and this is done on this case just by removing the thumb screws at the back of the case and then this little plate attaches to the power supply unit itself. If you're using a modular power supply then this is a little bit easier but if you're using a non-modular power supply then you're going to have some cables hanging through that you're going to have to feed through first but this really isn't an issue at all. As this is a modular power supply all I needed to do was simply screw the screws into the plate and then the sort of plate power supply combo then simply slides in. If you don't have a sliding mechanism then it's just a case of putting it in from the inside and then screwing in a very similar way that we are now. Now that you've got your power supply in, it's just a case of sticking in your SSDs and hard drives in the bays provided. If you don't have hard drive bays, I find it helps a lot to do it in this order, as once you've got the motherboard in, it can be a little bit more tricky. But now it's time to sort out the motherboard and processor, RAM and all that good stuff. So get your computer shell and move it out of the way. Now the motherboard is the bit that probably scares the most people, but it's actually fairly simple to do and it's almost just like Lego, it's just like slotting things in. Get it out of the box, remove the IO shield and then this is the point where you need to make sure you ground yourself either by touching a metal object like a case or a radiator or with an ESD strap. Then you just need to simply remove it from its bag. This is an ESD prevention bag to reduce the risk of electrostatic discharge. Um, this is something that a lot of people are very terrified of, ruining their components by electrostatic discharge. But as long as you're pretty sensible about it and don't wear something stupid, I think you're going to be fine. It does help as well if you are working on wooden surfaces rather than carpet. So to install the RAM, don't try to just force it in willy-nilly without paying attention to what you're doing. You need to make sure that the grooves are properly aligned because there's only one way to do it. So simply line up the groove with the groove on the RAM. Make sure you're inserting into the right slots. They are color coded and you can find which ones to use in your motherboard manual. And these are labeled A1 and A2 and B1 and B2 on these Skylake motherboards. You will need to use a fair amount of force here, but the little clips on the right hand side should just literally clip into place and you should then be able to work out when your RAM is properly installed. Now for the brain of the computer, the processor. Simply lift off the cover using the little hook that you'll find attached to your motherboard. Then you need to get your processor out of its little package and then it's time to insert it. Simply find the arrow on the top of the processor where you can see here, a little gold arrow, and then line that up with the board. Then you just need to simply drop your processor into place. An emphasis on drop, this requires no force whatsoever. 
then you just need to lower the clamps into place. And that's literally the processor installed. All we need to do now is get some cooling involved and then basically hook everything else up. So get your case and now flip it on its side. It's time to insert the motherboard into the case. Before we do that though, make sure we get that IO shield from earlier and place it into your case. And this requires a little bit of force, but there's no attachment. It simply clips and locks into place. Once your IO shield is in, you then need to untie any loose cables that you've got in your case and move them out of the way for now. Grab your motherboard and then drop it over your standoffs and insert it through the IO shield. Note that some cases won't have the standoffs pre-applied and you will need to insert them. Once you've got your motherboard lowered, you might need to wiggle it about a little bit to actually get it to properly go over the standoffs and through the IO shield. Then you need to grab the screws and these are provided with your case and you can find out which ones they are by looking at the manual. And then you just need to simply screw your motherboard down into the standoffs. And you've got quite a few holes, you should be fairly straightforward to find where they are, uh, all four corners and then in the middle. And you just need to screw them in a cross pattern until your motherboard is in nice and tight. A good way to check that you've done everything right and that everything is properly aligned, grab a USB drive and plug it into your computer. And if you can get it in the slots, then you'll know that you've lined everything up. And if you can't, you will know that you have done something slightly wrong and something needs some readjustment. Now it's time to stand your PC back upright. We're gonna work on the CPU cooler, graphics cards, and plugging everything else into the motherboard correctly. And it's at this stage that your PC should look at something a little bit like this. Don't forget this is an inverted case if you're wondering why everything looks a little bit upside down. But regardless whether you're building an inverted PC or not, we're now gonna insert the CPU cooler. So we put the backplate on the back of the motherboard like so, and then it's time to actually screw into that backplate so that when we apply the head of the CPU cooler, it actually has something to latch onto. All you need to do is insert all four posts and then screw them into the backplate. Before I attach the head though, it's time to get the radiator screwed in. This literally just sits at the bottom of the case. It's very easy, but you can put this at the side or wherever else you want in your case, depending on what case you've got. And then you just need to screw the fans into the top. Once again, it's really important to make sure your fans are facing the right way. So if you want to use it as an intake, then the fans are intaking air. And if you want to use it as an exhaust, then they are thus getting the air out of your case. An intake in this case is going to be much cooler. You'll now have something that looks a little bit like this. And you can see that we've got a dangly pump hose thing that needs to be attached to the CPU and thus take away the heat from it. Get your PC back on its side, making sure to take off the cover of your pump head and then that literally just needs to sit on top of your CPU. Make sure that when you're attaching the screws that you do this in a cross pattern and once you've done this by hand it's then time to grab your screwdriver again and then start tightening everything up. You want to use a fair amount of force but make sure you do this very carefully because over tightening could damage your CPU. Now we just need to plug the wires that are attached to our fans and CPU cooler into the board. You see here I've just plugged the water pump one in and then you've also got a CPU fan header next to it where we plug in the CPU fan. As we are using a water cooler that has an adapter uh, with two fan headers, we just need to plug the fans into this adapter and then we plug that into the CPU header. This means that we can then control two fans with the one system. As this board also has Corsair Link functionality, that can plug directly into one of the USB headers, but first we need to plug the USB part of it into the water cooled head itself. Now that the motherboard and CPU cooler are installed, it's time to grab those cables that we hid earlier and grab a SATA cable from the motherboard box. This then plugs into your SSD like so, feed that round the back and then through one of your cable management holes. This then plugs directly into your motherboard just like so. It's really easy and should literally just click into place. Repeat this for all your drives and then pick up the wires that we left earlier. These are known as headers and these go on your motherboard. Look at your motherboard manual and this will tell you exactly where you need to plug all these wires in, but we're using a little adapter that should make this a little bit easier. All these pins control things like hard drive lights, turning your PC on and off, and reset switch and the like. You'll soon know about it if one of these doesn't work properly because your power switch won't turn your PC on or something similar like that. But simply plug them all into your adapter and then it's a case of getting that into the motherboard directly. If you don't have an adapter, it really doesn't make too much difference. 
and it just means that it's slightly more difficult for you to reach in and plug all these things in. Now I mentioned earlier that if you do it wrong your power switch won't turn on your computer. That's exactly what I managed to somehow do during this build as you can see here the power switch is in the wrong one. Don't do that. Now simply feed the cables or the filled in adapter through your cable management holes and then you just need to grab the whole unit and plug it in to the appropriate slot on your motherboard. It's normally in the corner and you can't really miss it but once again do check your motherboard manual to find out exactly where this is if you can't do it. The same applies with the rest of the cables. So we have two USB 2 headers, we have one there and then one there. We have a USB 3 header and we also have the HD audio header which connects the audio to the front panel on our case. You probably might have noticed that your fans also have some of these cables so these power the fans and these are connected to either a fan controller like I'm using a Corsair link box here or you can just plug them directly into the motherboard or your case might actually have a built-in fan controller also. If you have any LEDs now is probably quite a good time to install them. If it's the sticky tape kind then you simply remove the sticky tape and then you need to stick them down. The trick with LEDs is that you don't want to see the LEDs themselves, only the light they give off. I found that the optimum placement in the 600C that I'm using is just one single bright strip down the bottom of the case. These are then powered by either the power supply or I'm using the Corsair Link box. To install the power supply cables we just need to grab the biggest one first which is absolutely huge you really can't miss it and then you plug this straight into the motherboard. From a cable management perspective you now want to feed this back through your cable management hole and into your power supply but if you're using a non-modular power supply obviously you need to do this in reverse. There's also another CPU header that you need to plug in and this cable looks just like this, it's an 8 pin cable and then this plugs in at the top of your motherboard. Make sure that you feed this round in a nice cable managed way so everything looks good and you don't have any cables cluttering the inside of your case. If you are using a modular power supply then of course you need to plug the other ends into your power supply. Now next up we are plugging in the drives and for this we're using these SATA power connections and these just plug into your SATA connected devices. Regardless of what type of power supply you're using you're also going to want to grab the PCIe cables that look a little bit like these and feed them through ready for your graphics card. And that's because it's now time to unscrew the slot covers on the back of your case. If you're using a dual slot card then you need to take out two that align with the slots on your motherboard and then you need to actually install your graphics card. Now other than the RAM this is actually probably the easiest component to install once you've taken the little covers off of the bottom and if you're using them the SLI fingers on the top simply just get the card align it with the slot and push down until you hear a firm click. While this won't require much force you do need to give it a bit of a push. Now the next step is to grab those cords that we hid earlier and plug the PCIe connections into the card. This uses two 8 pins but you'll have any combination of 6 and 8 pin connections to plug in depending on the graphics card model you've gone for. The reason I say do this before screwing into your case is that if you haven't fed them through properly you might find that it's easier to do so uh, when the card isn't there and you won't need to unscrew it. But regardless you will need to screw your graphics card into the case using the screws that we took out to remove those plates. If you're lucky enough to be using multiple graphics cards then you just need to do the same with the lower down slot and insert that into place. If you're installing multiple Nvidia cards then don't forget you'll need to use an SLI bridge. And now it's time to put everything back together. I leave both side panels off until I know everything is properly working but the front panel where you've got your fans it probably makes sense to put that back on. Now plug in a keyboard, mouse and a USB drive containing the operating system you're going to install. If you're doing a gaming PC then it probably makes sense for you to use Windows and we're using Windows 10. Now you need to grab yourself a monitor and plug your computer into your monitor. If you're using a graphics card then make sure you plug your display into the graphics card and not the motherboard. Now before we get this thing turned on it's important to make sure our cable management is in an acceptable state because it's a lot easier to do it now than later. That said, don't use zip ties just yet because you might need to change something later. Just make sure everything is good to go. So, moment of truth time. It's time to grab your power supply cable, plug it into the back of your PC and then connect it to the wall. Don't turn it on just yet. You're going to want to make sure that you're in a position that can easily turn it off if something is amiss. Now it's moment of truth time. Press the power button and watch your screen flicker and then go into the BIOS. 
In this case, of course, it didn't do that because I'm filming the screen waiting for something to happen and it didn't because I hadn't actually plugged in that on switch properly into the motherboard. And if this happens, it doesn't matter. Just go and see what's the problem. But assuming you do get to this BIOS screen, you don't need to change too many settings at the moment. Things like RAM XMP and things like that can wait. But the main thing is you want to check that everything is properly detected. So your CPU is detected and all your RAM and the speed that it's running at is correct. Then you just need to select your boot device, which is of course the USB drive. And then you just need to boot into the Windows bootloader. Once you're here, it couldn't be simpler. Just follow the on-screen setup instructions to install Windows. If you're using Windows 10, you can enter a serial key later, but if you're using Windows 8, which you're probably not, uh, you have to enter it at the time. Make sure you install it on the right hard drive though, because if you're using a solid state drive and a normal hard drive, you're gonna want it on your solid state drive. But yeah, just follow the on-screen instructions and then it will take you into Windows. Now, so at this stage, you're gonna want to connect your computer to the internet. On some motherboards I've used before, I've been able to get on the internet without installing any drivers at all, whereas on others I've needed to go on the manufacturer's website, download all the drivers onto a USB drive, and then put them on the computer. Either way, go to the manufacturer's website of your motherboard, download all the drivers either onto a USB drive or onto your computer, and then just start installing stuff. And then once all the drivers are done, you have a fully working PC. And it's at this stage you'll look back and think of all these boxes that you had and just go, wow, I put all these things together and it works. And it really is a really good feeling and if you haven't done it before, I highly recommend you do. I will definitely say I probably haven't done a single PC build where there hasn't been a minor issue, but that's just the way it goes. And so with that, it brings us to the end of this video. That is how to build this Skylake build computer. I hope it's inspired you to get planning a new PC build if you're an expert, or if you've never done it before, I hope it acts as a guide to help you build your first one. If you're wondering what this thing can do, how it performs, benchmarks, gaming, G-Sync, 4K, it's all coming in the next video. We've got two Asus ROG Swifts that I'm looking at right now. One's 4K with G-Sync, the other one is 165Hz, 1440p, both are IPS panels, we've got a 4K TV, don't think the OLED TV is going to be here in time, but all of this cool stuff is coming up on the channel next week and beyond. So if you haven't already subscribed, if you haven't seen part 1, go and check that one out, and if part 3 is available, it will be at the top right corner in the little eye. Thank you so much for checking out this video. It's been an absolute pleasure to be able to make this for you guys. It really has been. Thank you once again to our hardware partners that actually helped us out with this. So Corsair, Asus and HyperX for providing some really cool gear. And if you want to see more, then stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching this video. Give it a like if you've liked it and I'll see you in the next one.